What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to make my very own crab risotto. I'm going to show you some techniques and tips along the way on making the very best creamy risotto guaranteed every time. Enjoy guys. What's up guys, how are you going? Welcome back to another video. It's Joey Sultana here and in today's recipe and video I'm going to be making a very own sweet corn and crab risotto. So I'm going to teach you guys the basic ways and techniques on how to make a perfect creamy risotto. Today I'll be using crab for my flavour and corn. So you can do any kind of flavouring you want with your risotto. I'm just going to teach you first the basics on how to cook perfect risotto using the basic ingredients that most of you guys have at home as a staple. Let's enjoy and have some fun. Alright guys, so for this recipe, you're going to need a wide pot like this one because essentially we're cooking rice or risotto here and usually with risotto or rice, it's got a double in volume and size so you're going to make sure that you've got enough surface area. What we need to do first is we're going to prep our ingredients, so our onion and our garlic, chuck it in the pan with some olive oil and some butter, cook that through and then we'll add in our rice and our wine. Alright guys, so you need one brown onion for this recipe, so all we're going to do is finally brunoise it, which means small dice it. First things first, I'm going to show you guys how to actually brunoise an onion. Alright, so first things first, you want to cut down one side of the onion first. And you want to keep that root part there intact. You don't want to lose that because that's going to help us to hold our onion together when we brunoise or fine dice our onion. So what we do first, cut in half again, and then we'll just peel the outer layer, the skin, off the onion because we don't need that and discard that. Beautiful. Okay, so with our onion, we've got our stem bulb or our stem tissue here. So here I've got my Dao Strong Shadow Black Series knife. Check them out at daostrong.com. They've got amazing knives there. Beautiful definition. All right, so in saying that now, all we gonna do is start to slice our onion thinly on one side and then cross over again. But you don't want to reach the end of that stem remember we've got to keep that there that's going to help our onion intact like so then what you do is run your knife down and slice your onion into fine little dice this is called a brunoise so a brunoise is small dice it's about two millimeters size little cubes okay so that's fairly easy just like that i'll show you again exactly how to do it so you have your onion and your stem at the other side so run your knife not all the way just almost touching the stem just like so and then run your knife again. I usually run it twice underneath and then one on top. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to actually prep any kind of vegetable when you are using a sharp knife. So with my hands, I'm showing you right now, you want to use your hand as a guide with your blade. So when your blade is going up and down or however you're slicing something, you got to make sure that your hands, your knuckles are guiding it. It's not flat. Your fingers aren't showing or your thumbs aren't showing okay so like my fingers right now it's like a claw it's arching over and my knife is just running down slowly yes i recommend you guys going a bit slower at first if you are starting up okay so you want to run your knife rocking it down and up just in a nice slow motion just to keep yourself safe from cutting yourself okay and once you become a pro and get used to it you'll be confident with your knife just like this beautiful brunoise that's it Alright guys, so onions are chopped up now. All we're gonna do is cook off our onions now with a bit of garlic and that olive oil and butter. So first things first, you're gonna add some olive oil to your pot here. I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of unsalted butter. Okay, so in your pot, you're gonna add in your butter and your olive oil. So I've got two tablespoons of olive oil, got one tablespoon of unsalted butter. We're gonna cook that off on a medium to low heat. Make sure it's not too high. Add in your diced up onions. Give that a good stir. Alright guys, so next thing is our garlic. So we've got our onions cooking off in our butter and our oil. So I've got about two teaspoons of minced garlic that I've already prepped beforehand. I'm gonna add this into your onions and butter. Beautiful, and you wanna give this a mix as well. Remember, it's on a medium to low heat. You don't wanna have it really high because like I said before, it will burn through your whole risotto and you don't want that. What I like to do at this point too is add a bit of salt to help draw out the moisture from the onions because 
it does have a bit of moisture and you want to help bring out the flavour too. Mixing every now and then, you want your onions and your garlic to be nice and translucent and soft just like this. It's got that nice soft touch to it, it's cooked down and the flavours have really intensified. Now you want to add in your risotto here, I've got one cup of risotto. Give this a good mix and you want to toast off your uh, boro rice for about 5 minutes. Also to get that bitter taste from the risotto, this is a good way of giving more flavour also to your end result. So it should come out just similar to this, comes out a little bit lighter in colour and it is just smelling absolutely divine in here. Should have like a really nice nutty flavour. Now you want to add in your white wine. I've got one cup of white wine there, just got to reduce that. All you really need is your onion, the garlic, your white wine and of course your risotto here. And because I'm doing a seafood kind of style risotto here with crab, I'm obviously going to be using some fish stock. You can use chicken stock or vegetable stock, it's up to you. I wouldn't use beef stock because that just would really change the flavour dramatically. So fish stock would work with this and I'm going to be using my actual fish stock that I've made in my previous video on how to make fish stock. So if you want to check the recipe up, it'll be up at the top here. So check that out if you're keen on that. It's just a basic fish stock recipe, easy to do. And what I'm going to do now is add in a ladle at a time. You're going to make sure though that your fish stock is hot enough to add into the risotto. Why this is important? Well, you gotta make sure when you're cooking this risotto that your stock is not cold. This has gotta really stop the cooking process, slow it down, and also potentially make it really starchy at the end of your risotto. So you want the process to be nice and quick, but also done properly. So I'm gonna add one ladle at a time of your hot stock, and just come out just like this. So the rice automatically absorbing all of that liquid, so keep doing the process, keep repeating it one ladle at a time. For the recipe, you'll need one cup of risotto and three to four cups of your fish stock. So with risotto, it has a solid to liquid ratio of three to one, which means three parts water or three parts stock to one cup of your rice. Because really, the risotto drinks and absorbs a lot of that liquid, okay? So you need enough liquid to help and get that really nice flavor through. I'm gonna add a bit of salt and keep repeating this process like I said this is a process that is done for centuries and it just really makes a difference doing it properly. Best part about having your own garden just cutting up some chives for this dish fresh and organic ingredients. So now what we want to run through is some fresh herbs got some chives here. I'm going to finally chop up some chives. I just love the chives the onion bit of note that it gives to this dish it's really tasty. Okay this is just from my local garden love using fresh herbs so you've got to keep mixing also every now and then, make sure you check it. Now, as you can see, it's coming along very well. Awesome, we're on the right track. This is what you want to see. So at this stage, I'm going to add in some full fat cream to our risotto to finish it off. So I will cook it for another couple of minutes just to adjust and get that extra creamy flavor to it. You don't have to add cream, you can leave it like this if you want. So I just want to let you know guys, when you are adding ingredients to a risotto, you want to make sure that you don't want to overcook the ingredient itself. So for example, I have my crab here picked already and it's already cooked and also my corn. So I'm not going to add this at the very start when I cook my risotto because it will overcook and you'll lose all that potential flavor that the crab has itself. All you got to do, remember, is you just got to heat up the ingredient. It's a mistake people make all the time, I know. You add the ingredients at the end, even my parsley and some chives, I'm going to add some fresh herbs at the end. Keep the vibrant color alive, you don't want to overcook your ingredients. That's a big no-no. And also to thicken up with the flavoring, I've got some parmesan and cheese I'm going to be adding in just to give the extra salty flavor. Add in three quarters cup of your thickened full fat cream. We're finishing it off now. So I like to cook it for a further two minutes with that cream just to give it a really nice luscious flavor and a creaminess to our risotto, which is what we're looking for. Should take about 20 minutes to cook. Now you want to run through your herbs. So I've got our chives that we prepped earlier and I've got a handful also of just the flat leaf parsley and just want to roughly chop that also. Here I've got some crab liver. This is amazing. It's like a mustard rich flavor. We're just going to add about a half a teaspoon in to our risotto. It's very strong. If you do check out my recent video on my crab, you will see me taking out the delicious crab mustard and roe. So check that out. Add in half a cup of parmesan cheese and you also want to add in a teaspoon of your lungfish caviar roe just to give a nice salty pop flavor. You want to add in one cup of your corn kernels and then follow through 140 grams of your picked crab meat. 
This is blue swimmer crab. Love blue swimmer crab in my risotto. It's so delicious. My pan is off now, guys. So remember, I'm not cooking anymore. I'm just adding everything at the last minute and giving it a nice mix. So the residual heat will heat through the ingredients. So you won't need to cook anymore. Here I've got some crab oil. If you want the recipe for that, comment down below. It's just a simple crab infused oil, really rich and delicious. I add a teaspoon of that also in there. Follow through another tablespoon of your unsalted butter. This has just got to give a really nice luscious finish to our crab risotto. Time to plate up. Our risotto is done and we've got our plate. I'm going to show you a cool restaurant style way of plating up something that looks really professional to show off to your loved ones or your family. Alright, so let's dive straight into it. Also, my fish stock recipe will be up here as well. I did use my fish stock for this recipe. You can, like I said, use a different kind of stock if you'd like. So, that is it guys. Thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed and learned something today about risotto and how to cook and how easy it is it actually is to make. So have fun with it. Hope you enjoyed and learned something today. If you did, please let me know, comment down below, and share this hashtag me at Joey Sultana. Thank you guys, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with another video. Ciao. Thank you.